Hello, Zero K fans! This is Chef Fury 33 bringing you another set of exhibition matches. This time we're going to be starting off on, a, on Bandit Plains, a very large map. It's a large version of Trojan Hills, which is my favorite map ever, but it isn't Trojan Hills. It's still close. Anyway, as usual, let's look at the map before the game gets started. Although, admittedly, it's a replay, so I can start whenever I'd like. Anyway, this, like I said, is... As soon as the game decides to respond. This is, as I said, the large version of Trojan Hills. It is basically Trojan Hills, but 16 by 16 instead of, I think, 12 by 12. It also adds in this nice little area over in the corner, northeast and southwest, where in Trojan Hills, this is just an extension of the rest of this. this is essentially, it is essentially mirrored like this. There's also this nice hill, which sometimes you see behemoths and su such built on it. I doubt you'll see it in this game, though. I, th I think it was a 2v2 where I saw that happen. One of the 2v2 tournaments. Rather neat. This is a great 2v2 map, by the way. There's a lot of paths to get around, a lot of places people can build up. In 1v1, however, typically you don't see it play too often. When you do, oftentimes you'll see light vehicles or air starts. Occasionally you see cloaky bot start. I mean, as you can see, plus 2.2 pretty much across the board. There are some plus 1.8s, but I believe those aren't really intentional. At any rate, some plus 1.8s around the map, mostly 2.2. It's fairly even overall with, like I said, Hidden areas over in the corners, nice little ridge setups. Usually what you see players do is they'll try to, the North player might try to go down here, set this area up. Oftentimes, I mean, the center is a contested area, though more often than not it's these hills here. The center itself is usually so contested that it comes down to reclaim of the center rather than the actual metal spots. If someone can take the metal spots, they've basically gotten the game. And then of course there's always the expansion over, the safe expansion that's as far away from your opponent as possible, which in this case is means going along the south or the north edge of the map and taking the metal extractors as one goes. Well, let's see how the players handle it. So fail thus, very quickly getting a cloaky bot factory, while Steel Blue on the other hand is going for cloaky as well. A cloaky mirror on bandit planes of all places. This is rather unusual, I must admit. It's a large map. It's going to be hard for the glaives. I mean, the glaives can get past. They can go through. It's not impossible. It's just, it's hard. It takes a while. It takes a long time for you, well, glaives. For glaives to get across, it takes a, Huh, it does break. Shoot. That's right, so that line didn't break. Oh well. Anyway. Yeah, I guess it does. Okay, I'm not sure why F4 breaks outline it. Didn't used to, it seems to now. Anyway, metal spots are fairly clear, and like I said, they're all even, so it should be fairly easy to tell where players are. Thankfully, this map does have clear metal spots. Some maps don't. This map does. I don't know why some maps don't. Honestly. The only excuses are maps that have a lot of snow and ice because they're very similar colors. And even then, I'm sure there's ways of doing it. I know with Iced Coffee, I probably screwed up and didn't do it. I mean, it, there, you can see them, sort of, but oftentimes it's so bright that you actually can't. I... Not, I'm not sure what it could have been done in that particular case with the ice and snow. Anyway, Steel Blue is going over to the northwest side of the map, is setting up some metal, or likely to set up metal extractors with their commander, and Felthos now spots it out. Felthos actually going over to the northwest rather than the north center. As I mentioned before, 1.8 here, so there isn't much motivation to go to the northwest for the north player. Unlike the south player, the southeast is a fairly defensible position that does have plus 2.2 on all these metal extractors. So it's actually quite worth it. Whereas the North player, I mean, it's still basically worth it, but you might as well go to the center. Plus four extra metal per second, or plus 0. 0.4 extra metal per second. Tiny difference, but tiny differences in the early game make a huge difference later on. Something I've learned playing against Google Frog is that Google Frog gets the details right and has a tendency to win as a result of that. If you don't know how best to handle your economy and you're trying to play against Google Frog, he will beat you every time. You will lose every time if you don't know how to really carefully handle placement of power plants, the order in which you place your metal extractors compared to your power plants. Like, basically, you want to place as many metal extractors as possible before you have to start placing power plants. And that's irrelevant for this game, but it is worth pointing out that tiny metal extractor differences are going to be relevant in that particular case. Anyway, Steel Blue now going out for just some poking and prodding, checking around the map. Felthos scouting out as well, going towards the northeast, Trying to intercept the, this Conjurer, and that was a great read. Feltos knows exactly where Steel Blue is going to be, and will intercept that no problem. 
while at the same time continue to expand on their own, going for safer expansions. They also have Glaives set up around their southern central expansion, just in case, just in case Steel Blue goes round the west here, tries to take that out directly. Steel Blue, on the other hand, they've taken the northwest, they've taken the north. They're not going to take the northeast for... Oh, yeah, Fail Thoughts will be able to stop that, so the northeast won't be taken for long. Steel Blue does not have any turrets built up and did not predict this. So they're going to lose that Conjurer, they're going to lose the Metal Extractor, and they don't really have much of an open location. This radar is dead, or at least it's going to be threatened, but everything else is protected. There's defenders, that, that'll that stop everything. At the same time, Steel Blue decided to go for the same attack in the rune, and Fail Thoughts did not make the same mistake. They didn't actually go forward. To an extent, they made a mistake by not going forward at all, but at the same time, they are not going to pay for not going forward. They have the defenders in their base, they have the glaives in their base. Steel Blue's Glaives are going to die. On the other hand, Steel Blue's Glaives up north are going to do a lot of damage to Failthos, unless Failthos realizes... Does Failthos realize what's going on? Not until just now! And Failthos does not retreat, manages to kill a couple Glaives, but loses all of their own inside of Steel Blue's territory. So, a bit of reclaim for Steel Blue. They can basically get their army value back from that. At the same time, Failthos moving forward to defending against Steel Blue, going for a flank as well, I think. This might have been a Pathfinding error, actually. Yeah, this is a Pathfinding error. That is unfortunate, because the flank idea wasn't bad, but that's not what was going on. It was... Glaives were going up the hill the long way. And unfortunately, they did not manage to get up in time. However, like I said, the Defense Terrors are already there, the Conjurer is not moving forward, it is being quite careful. But that does give Steel Blue some room to maneuver. Steel Blue is pushing Felthos back. Felthos now, kind of timid, wanting to keep their forces back, wanting to keep defensive, building another Lotus, building more Defense Turrets, they are, however, moving towards the center, and they have taken this north hill. Going for defense before going for expansion, which is a wise move given Steel Blue's Glaives are on the move. And Steel Blue goes around the back, will be hitting the Lotus and defenders. These Glaives will be able to kill a Metal Extractor, maybe. Then on the north, however, we do see that Steel Blue is coming north and will be able to deal a fair amount of damage, get rid of a couple Glaives, but will lose their Glaives inside of what is, at this point, ostensibly Felthos' territory. Leaving Felthos with a decent amount of reclaim to work with, and then that will... Well, we'll see. I mean, Steel Blue hasn't taken advantage of this reclaim. Felthos hasn't really taken advantage of their own either. And it's something that, in general, is a good idea to do. It's a little difficult to do early on in the game, and actually Felthos is well positioned to do this. Oh, unfortunately the defenders do go down. Not quite enough defenses were set up, and the Glaives are actually going to be able to take care of this entire base. Because Felthos' Glaives were not here in time. But anyway, as I was saying... Having Conjurers nearby to take Reclaim is generally a good idea. Just having them around. I mean, defend them, of course, but take the Reclaim. I mean, at this point, Felthos can actually reclaim all of this stuff, and from there, we'll be able to easily rebuild. Steel Blue, on the other hand, is actually accessing. Does not have a... Or does have a caretaker. Does have two caretakers, in fact. But those are fairly new, because they are accessing. While Felthos, on the other hand, they have plus... Or minus 30 into the factory. They have plus 24 coming in in total. So they should be good if they start reclaiming. Like, reclaim would be fairly safe. Their commander is, however, not moving out too far. I think... Where'd their commander go? Their commander was moving along the north, I believe. Oh, never mind. Their commander's staying inside their base, not doing anything. On the other hand, Steel Blue's commander was going over to the west and is building a slight... Well, a shield bot factory. Not sure exactly what they're going to be going for with that, honestly. Probably going to build up a shield ball and then just march it around the corner. However... Failthos, either just by guessing or by blind luck, manages to define the shieldbot factor before it completes. The Lotuses will be able to help protect it. They will take out a few glaze before going down. Steel Blue's commander as well, but Steel Blue's commander is a support commander that's completely unupgraded, and the shieldbot factory has been spotted out. At this point, Failthos appears to be just trying to at least scout out what's going on. Bandit's coming up. No ability to actually destroy that, but that information is invaluable. At this point, Steel Blue knows exactly what's going on, or at least a decent amount of what's going on. And we'll probably start build, well, building up some Rockos and a few Warriors, but we'll probably start building up Snipers, I'm sure. I mean, when you're facing against Shield Blood Factory, you're going to be expecting a Shield Ball. Although Bandits are currently what's coming out, but a Shield Ball is usually likely, so building a Sniper isn't a bad idea if you have the resources to, well, rather the military, to manage whatever's coming at you. Sorry, Steel Blue's the one building the Warriors. Feldos is building Rockos. Feldos already has the counter up, although unfortunately they're... Nope, never mind. They're not going to lose them. These glaives will take care of the glaives in the center, leaving the Rockos free to take care of the warriors. However, the warriors are going south. Steel Blue not giving that away from the looks of it. Well, Felthos is vaguely aware of it. 
But on the other hand, Felthos moving forward, trying to keep Steel Blue back, at least keeping a handful of the Glaives back. The Glaives are by and large being kept back. Steel Blue, however, is trying to establish a contain on Felthos. Felthos still hasn't taken the southwest, and Steel Blue is taking the northeast, which is kind of the equivalent. And this point, Felthos trying to take out this northwest expansion, this is going to be very, very costly. If they take out the entire expansion, it might be worth it. But with the reclaim that will come from these Glaives, I don't see this being... This is not worth it. That was a huge amount of reclaim that was just taken right there. That was... How much reclaim was that? 384 reclaim, and they lost, like, maybe 300 metal worth of units. Yeah, that wasn't worth it at all. Or not units, of buildings more so. That was not worth it. That was actually Feltos feeding Steel Blue metal. And at this point, Steel Blue coming around the back once again, taking out the defenses. And this is going very well. The big difference between Steel Blue and Feltos has been the positioning of their Lotuses. Steel Blue has had their Lotuses positioned far apart enough that the Glaives can't easily take out all of them at once without spreading themselves too thin. Whereas Feltos, on the other hand, their defenses have all been very nearby, trying to focus their fire, but at the same time, it means it's easier to take them out. And it's also, it seems like they're blocking each other's line of sight. Like for the common attack angles, Steel Blue's Lotuses get nice combined line of sight, whereas Feltos is... They were just getting in each other's way. However, Feltos still moving forward. Unfortunately, trying to fight raiders with skirmishers, which is a risky proposition. It can work, and there are quite a few Roccos. So it could very well be a feasible solution, but this is definitely risky. At the same time, Felthos trying to just block off the eastern side of the map, make sure Steel Blue can't move south from there, while pushing west. And I should point out that Felthos doesn't actually have to worry about Shield Ball. Does have to worry about Roaches, though, but not Shield Ball. Shield Ball has not been a concern so far, and Gunship Plant is coming up while both players, in fact, going for a Gunship Switch. Felthos will have theirs completed. First, both players are going for it. That is most certainly the strategy of the day. Steel Blue continuing to build up more and more warriors, which is unusual. Warriors and Zeus's are basically countered by Rockos. The Glaives do a nice job supporting it, but they are countered by Rockos, pretty much. The Zeus, however, coming over to the north, trying to deal with all this. A decent amount of defenses have been set up, and the Rockos are in place to help out. But unfortunately, the Zeus does not really care for the Defender. And once again, I should point out and plug the Stardust. Stardust is a wonderful defensive and explosive on death turret that is perfect for your anti-raider needs. Only 350 metal and you can build it anytime. That plug was not sponsored at all, just... Seriously, Stardust is... Sorry, 220 metal. Yeah, bit of a short range, but it's actually a quite useful turret. I mean, defenders are handy, but honestly, I... I'm a little surprised we don't see more Stardust usage. Especially when people are expecting Glaives again to hit an area, like the back here. Stardust would have taken that out. Rather than losing the entire south side. Twice. And Roach is coming in in the north, trying to get rid of these units, but actually not being able to do so. I mean, there's... They are trying, but Rockos do have range on them, and... It's kind of difficult to set up that trap. Especially since Felthos is quite aware of the fact that there is a Roach there, and Steel Blue's not letting it... Is that... No, it's on maneuver. Roaches and Ticks should generally be kept on hold position. The fact that that's not default is a little bit odd. I thought it was, but maybe Felth... Maybe Steel Blue changed that, because you can change your own defaults personally. And Steel Blue able to take out the eastern side of the map, not able to take out all of it though, and these Lotuses remain where they are. While on the other hand, Felthos over on the west side of the map will be able to take care of both the Shield Blood Factory and the Gunship... Never mind! They will try! They have lost half of their army thanks to a Roach! I should of course point out... There are Roaches! Roaches are a thing! And in fact, they are being distracted by the Rapiers too, not going for the Shield Blood Factory, which would be the more... useful option. Felthos not paying any attention to this side of the map at all, Focusing almost entirely on the eastern side of the map. Which is rather to their detriment, because they would have had a chance to get rid of that Shieldbot factory had they focused on it. And with that much health, I think that the Rocco's dealing... The Rocco's deals 179 damage a shot. Yeah, I probably would have been able to, well, put a larger dent in it, if, if nothing else. Anyway, Trident's coming up for Feltos, along with the Black Dawn. Trying to basically stop the Rapiers and... 
I guess do a high density attack on the main base. I mean, there's not really a whole lot in the map that's black donnable. Large concentrations of units are typically a okay target, but generally large concentrations of buildings are your ideal target for a Black Dawn. And right now, there isn't really either. Steel Blue has the units rather spread out, keeping themselves from getting attacked from pretty much any angle. Fairly effectively, too. However, the Rockos and Warrior over the east side of the map doing a nice job. Felthas appears to be taking the game. They're not too far ahead, but it is there is an advantage. There's an advantage to be had, and the Trident's coming in to get rid of, or at least chase away the Rapiers. Does a decent job there. The Black Town, however, is not going to be able to do too much. It's going to hit, kill maybe one or two bandits. Maybe. No, not even that. Doesn't even manage to take out the bandits. And needs to be retreated. Why is Feltos not paying attention to this? This is extremely valuable, and now is going to die for nothing. Seriously, this is... This Black Dawn is so close to death. It is dead! And it did not have to die. I don't know what Feltos is paying attention to. They are paying attention to that side now, but they lost the Black Dawn in the process, and that was careless. And unfortunately, that's, such carelessness is difficult to avoid because there was a lot going on in the northeast side of the map at the same time, where... Felthos is focusing much more, and actually getting rid of a lot of Steel Blue's forces, but Steel Blue wasn't really caring so much about that. I mean, they want to defend this, of course, and they did lose quite a bit in the process. This, however, is no... I mean, this is almost a distraction. Steel Blue setting up what looks like an army to go for a rather surgical assault along this corridor here, or along the west side of the map. And these bandits, moving forward, they can actually get rid of these tridents fairly easily. Though it looks like they're being placed here to, for defense, and they will spot out the conjurers and be able to stop them. Steel Blue focusing enough on here, or at least, you know, the bandits on their own accord, getting rid of that. No, oh, never mind, Steel Blue is in fact focusing on them, and will be able to take care of... Maybe take care of this. If all the bandits are together, but they are not, the Lotuses will stop them, and Steel Blue not turning back in time, letting the bandits die, and... Mm, was able to take care of this northeastern problem. Push it back a bit, Feltos moving their units back. But the bandits unfortunately went in basically one at a time along the southwest, stopping any meaningful damage from being dealt. And along the center, Feltos, because, I mean, partly because of that, and partly just because Feltos was able to take air to an extent with the tridents, there isn't a whole lot that Steel Blue has. Steel Blue's been falling behind gradually this entire time. And. While the Shieldblood Factory helped a bit, and they are finally reclaiming a bit more. At this point, Feldos, I think, has been just reclaiming in general a lot more across the map. I mean, there's been some reclaim going on here from Steel Blue. But Feldos was hit quite hard earlier on, and they have taken a lot of the reclaim that they lost. And also, like I said, just the type counters. Rocco's beat Warriors, and Rocco's do a decent amount of damage against, well, rather, they're pretty good at dealing with Zeus's. So, really, Steel Blue just went for the wrong side of the counter triangle. If they had more glaives and bandits and positioned them in the right way, that would have been a completely different story. And of course, these warriors don't help with that, but Rocco's or Rogues, well, Rogues, maybe not. Rogues require a decent amount of manual micromanagement, but Rocco's definitely would have been able to take care of those warriors without too much issue. Mind you, might have had the Rocco Brownie in motion machine if the, <laughs> if the two bears had decided, if, well, either, if Felthos's Rocco's and Steel Blue's Rocco's had gone against each other. That does happen. Mildly annoying to deal with. You have to be... I mean, if you're careful, if you're paying attention, you can actually break out of that. Turn it to your advantage. But it is a bit difficult to do. Especially with all the stuff going on around the map. Right now, Felthos trying to take out the northeastern area. Northeastern expansion Steel Blue has taken. And Steel Blue, at the same time, going towards the center, trying to spread across that. Trying to keep a nice line, although it's a very thin line. It's very easy to break at any point. Hey. I'm a bit surprised players don't do staggered lines like this more often. Or just, or you'd have this, where it's just kind of a semi-box formation, so there's multiple lines in a, in a row. Players don't tend to do that too much, I've noticed. Anyway, Brawler coming from Felthos. Should be able to take care of the gunship plant. Might be able to take care of the shield factor before the Felon comes in, but then there's no support for the Felon. There's not even really any convicts. There's nothing much, and Steel Blue is... Probably going to lose this. If they lose the gunship plant, they might just throw in the towel right then and there. I mean, they have the rapiers, but Thalthos has tridents. Which are going to be able to take care of the rapiers in just a moment's time. And there they go. There it is. There's the rapier death. First rapier down. Second rapier down. 
gunship plant goes down, shield bot factory as well goes down. And that felon is all that's left, and even that isn't going to last too long. No shields, brawler taking it out. Failthos has basically just taken it, going for the kill. Steel Blue finally goes for Rockos, but unfortunately too little too late. And we do see a bit of a Brownie in motion fight, but ultimately those Rockos are going to lose for Steel Blue. The Glaive's not participating there. They aren't actually taking that out. And at the same time, western side of the map, Steel Blue just losing everything here. Trying to take care... I'm able to push away some of the Tridents and kill a couple of them with Gremlins, but they don't have enough to really get rid of the rest of this army. And realizing this, Steel Blue throws in the towel, and that is game. Bit of a crushing finish there from Veilthus. It had the advantage early on. There was, there was kind of a midpoint where it was a little hard to tell. You know, the right use of reclaim and unit counters would have done it. But yeah, Steel Blue just insisted on the Warriors, and Failthos knew that Steel Blue was insisting on the Warriors. Kept going for Rockos, and that was the right choice. So that worked out very well for Failthos, and they won that game handily. Moving on, we will have a game between... Flipstip and Orphelius on the updated Red Comet, which... I don't know if you'll notice on the stream the difference. It's just mostly specularity and a fix of the Fuse map. The Fuse map originally of the original original Red Comet has a ton of JPEG artifacts in it. They're impossible to notice with the detail texturing, but they do exist. That was... that was annoying to try to deal with. Anyway, yeah, mostly Orphelius worked on it. I did a bit of work too. But we'll be getting into that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.